I want to title this, The Message to the Thirsty. Message to the Thirsty. Uh, Your body is made up of about 60% of water. Your brain is made up of 70%. Your blood contains 83%. Your heart, 79%. Your bones, 22%. Muscles, 75%. Liver, 86%. And kidneys, 83%. You need water. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need water. There's a lot of symptoms to being, there's a lot of symptoms to being dehydrated and not having enough water. Uh, One of the the things that water does for you is it helps you to discard waste. If you don't have enough water in your body, you become, it's all grown folks in, you become constipated. And you can't make what move, move, You you know what I mean? And so you need water to help you discard waste, whether from the front or from the back, whatever you vomit, whatever you're doing, to sweat, you need water to help you discard the waste within your body. If the waste stays in your body, it poisons you. Turn to your neighbor and say, you need water. Water helps you to absorb nutrients. We take vitamins and we take... uh, different medications and things, and if you are really careful about reading the label, it will tell you to drink tons or plenty of water as you're taking these medications or these these vitamins or whatever it is. Drink plenty of water so that your body will help to, uh, to the water will help your body to absorb whatever it is that you ingest. You need water. Tell your neighbor, you need water. I don't do this a whole lot, but it's just cool because you need water. It's a common principle. So you need water. Uh, When you are dehydrated, I remember one time I got really dehydrated and my mom um, took me to the hospital. We had no clue what was going on. I had been running track and playing football and doing all these sports, lifting and exercising and going and going and going and going and going. And I've been drinking, not drinking, but I've been drinking like juice and stuff like that, Kool-Aid and all this other stuff, but I wasn't drinking enough water. Not, to, not knowing that this would cause um, flu-like symptoms, and it would cause me to be lethargic, and it would cause my face to turn pale, my lips to turn dark, almost bluish color, and, and I got really fatigued and tired and sick. And my mom was like, what is wrong with this boy? It was COVID before COVID, you know what I mean? So she takes me to the hospital, and they're running, I mean, every kind of test you can think of. We're there for hours. And I'm like, man, give me a result. Like, is it cancer, doctor? What's going on? And uh, he says, you're, you're dehydrated. I felt so stupid. I was like, I could have drank water and been fine. Like, I'm here, you know? And the bill wasn't small after all those tests. And so um, they gave me like three, I think it was three IVs they gave me, three bags. And um, I felt alive. My mom almost beat me because of all the time that we spent at the hospital. She was not happy. But I'm saying this to say that you need water. Water is very important. Muscle cramps, weakness, nausea, lightheadedness are all symptoms or some of the symptoms of you not having enough water. If you'll turn to, to, with me to the book of John, and we are going to the... Seventh verse, or the seventh chapter, sorry. Book of John, seventh chapter, 37th verse. John 7, 37. It says, on the last day of that great feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. 38 says, he who believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. This is a message to the thirsty. There are people, we we have situations in our lives that are thirsty situations. We have ground that we walk upon that is thirsty ground. And when I say that, I mean that when the enemy walks, it's scorched earth. Right? Where the enemy walks, there's scorched earth. And what people do to try to hydrate themselves outside of the Lord is they turn to drugs and alcohol and promiscuity. And they turn to witchcraft and they turn to everything that is anti-Christ. 
You unlock the Antichrist when you are anti-Christ. You unlock the Antichrist to operate in your life when you do things that are anti-Christ. So, so the message that I'm giving you is to the thirsty. There are, our society has become thirsty. We've turned to politics to answer things that the church should be answering. We've turned to schools to answer things that only the Holy Ghost can really educate us upon. We've turned to, to, to pornography and drugs and alcohol to give us a release from the stresses and the pressures of life. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that more abundantly. Jesus said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, freedom. So, so with that liberty and that freedom without the Holy Ghost, if I turn to something opposite than the Holy or other than the Holy Ghost, I'm only surrendering myself to bondage. You need water. When the scripture talks about water, a lot of times it's talking about the spirit of God. Can we go back to that scripture? John 39, verse 39. John 7, verse 39. And it, it says, but when he spoke, he was speaking concerning the spirit, the Holy Ghost, whom the, who, who believed on him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified or crucified or ascended back into heaven to where, because he said, I'm going to go and I'm going to send a comforter. Meaning that on my way up, he's on his way down. And so he was glorified when he went up that we might receive glory on its way down. So when it's talking here, it's talking about this, this, the spirit of the living God is water unto us. A lot of the things that we deal with in our lives, we're, we're thirsty because we have not received the Holy Ghost. Or we have not sipped of the Holy Ghost. If you believe on me as the scripture has said, the Bible says that he died on a cross, was buried and rose three days later. The Bible says that he was born of a virgin. The Bible says that, that he came to set the captives free. The Bible, if you believe on me like the scripture has said, you could do all things through me. You can, you can speak things through me. If you say in my name, it'll happen for you. This is what he said. So if you believe on me as the scripture has said, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. This is a message to the thirsty. Go with me to the, the next scripture, the next verse, next chapter. I'm, I want to draw a parallel here. Jesus is talking about um, the spirit being poured out. <clears throat> and go with me to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. I want to draw a parallel. The Bible talks about the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was the place where the Lord's presence was, right? This is the maximum presence of God here on the earth. And it was the place, it was pure, it was undefiled, it was holy, it was, it was just amazing. Everything was perfect here. The weather was about 95. Some people don't like that. Whatever is perfect to you, is, you know, it was 95. The sun was out. There was a couple of clouds just because you could hide out every now and then under a cloud. Whatever. The water was warm. It was almost like, nah, I was going to say Houston, but the pastor's here. But it was warm. You know, it was, it was like Louisiana. It was like Louisiana next door. So it was really warm. It was a beautiful place. And so the spirit was there. Now, Genesis 2.10 says, now a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from there, it departed into four heads over the river. Number 11. The name of the first was Pisan. And that one, it travels around the land of Havilon, and there was a lot of gold in this land. Number 12. And the gold in that land was good. There was Bedallion and Onyx stone there also. Number 13. The name of the second river was Gihon. And that one, it traveled around the land of Cush. And the next one, the third river was Hadikiel, and it ran in the, and it 
is the one which runs towards east, towards Assyria. The fourth was the Euphrates River. And 15. And the Lord took the man and put him in the midst of the garden to tend to the garden and to keep it. I want to draw a parallel here to tell you that you are the new Eden. God wants his presence to rest so heavy upon you that you are now the Eden. You are now the peace place. You are now the place where the presence of God rests and it dwells. And out of your belly, if you believe on Jesus, he'll flow rivers of living water out of your belly. When God told me that, I was like, that's that's crazy. What? But you're the new Eden. But God has a he has something that he needs you to do to tend to the garden. You are the garden. And you have to tend to you as the garden. So that the river is not dammed up, it is not stopped up, that you are not stopping the flow of the spirit out of your belly. Because the world needs the flow of the Holy Ghost out of your belly. Your kids need the flow of the Holy Ghost out of your belly. Your in-laws need the Holy Ghost, their flow out of your belly. If you go back to those scriptures, it talks about all these precious stones and metals that were there in the land where the river flowed. You want to be rich, get in the flow. You want to be healed, get in the flow. You want deliverance, get in the flow. You want transformation in your mind, get in the flow. I've been telling God, you know what, Lord, I love you, but I want to be so anointed that when I walk into the room, the atmosphere shifts and people are free, even if it's just for the moment that I'm there. I'm there for, just go with me in my imagination, right? The place is heavy with bondage. I go into the room and the, the Holy Ghost is so strong in me. When I go in, the oppression has to leave. And God is able to clearly speak to people, and they receive what he says. It deposits in their spirit just like that. And when I leave, the depression or oppression might go back on them, but God was able to minister in that moment. Because it will always draw them back to, I remember that time when God spoke to me. I remember that time when freedom was right there. God, use me like that. That's how I want the spirit to flow from out of me. So God is saying, you are the new Eden that I want to dwell here. The Bible says that he walked with Adam in the cool of the garden, in the cool of the day. They walked together in the garden. God wants to do that with you. But he's not going to do it externally. He wants to do it internally. Message to the thirsty. You need water. Go with me to Genesis or sorry, John, John chapter 4. I'm feeling antsy. This is why this is good. Maybe this is good to me, but it's good. John chapter 4. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, if you knew the gift of God and who it was who said to you, give me something to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. This woman is talking to Jesus, and she's just doing her normal routine stuff, and she tells Jesus, hey, uh, she just comes up, and Jesus is sitting there on the well just hanging out, kicking his feet. This is my imagination. Just kicking his feet, swinging his feet, hanging out, doing his thing, probably talking, praying, and she's like, oh, my gosh, this guy's crazy, like, whatever. So she's, you know how it is when you go somewhere, and there's this weirdo just hanging out, and you're like, let me get to my car. That's probably how it was, right? So she goes to her thing. She starts getting the water, getting the water, doing her thing. And Jesus says, hey, woman, uh, let me get something to drink. No. Get your own water, you know. And she says, how can you ask me to get, you don't have nothing to draw water with. It's too deep. You got something? No, I don't. But give me something to drink. She gets an attitude with him. And he says, well, if you knew who I was, you would just be like, you give me. You give me something to drink. Remember, the scripture said just before that, this is a previous scripture, he said, if you believe on me as the scripture said. He's confirming that scripture, two scriptures later, come on, a couple chapters later, he's reconfirming what he already said. If you believe on me as the scripture said, 
clearly she didn't believe on him as the scripture said because he's saying if you knew who I was and who it was who said to you give me drink you would ask for me to give you something to drink and it wouldn't be this natural spring water it would be living water Ooh, that's good and the thing is, though, but so she goes to this conversation and she jumps to all these different parallels in her life and all these different things. And then they jump to religion. And Jesus says, well, wait a minute. We worship what we you don't know what you're really worshiping. And she says, well, I know that we worship in the you say we worship in the in the temple. and We say we worship out here. Do whatever. Jesus said, no, 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 no. The time is coming where you worship God in spirit and in truth. But the, the, pre, the preamble to that was, you need the water. It's hard to worship God in spirit when you don't have the spirit. Ooh, that's so good. Because if you don't have his spirit, what spirit do you possess? That's kind of a whooping right there. If you don't have God's spirit, what spirit do you have? I've heard people talk about the Holy Ghost. Well, it's, the Holy Ghost isn't it. No, the Holy Ghost is a he. Well, the Holy Ghost could be a woman. No, Jesus said the comforter, he will comfort you. He will teach you. So he needs to fill you. Let's stick with who he actually is. So if you're anti his spirit, then you're anti him. So you can't worship God in spirit and in truth without his spirit's involvement. So it's good. So the, so the woman goes on to tell him all these other things. And so Jesus says, well, hey, go get your husband. This woman says, well, I'm not married. He says, you're right. I know you're not married. You've had five husbands. And the one you're with now is not your husband. So at that point, she's just like, uh. Sir, I perceive you're a prophet. Jumps into all this religious stuff, and she says, well, the Christ should come. And he says, well, I'm him. So she runs off to the city. She leaves her water bucket. Now, let me tell you, the water bucket is that thing that you've been doing outside of Christ that's not drawing the spiritual water, but it's just sitting here. Now, she leaves her water bucket and races off to the city because now she's tasted of the living water. And so the Bible says that she went to the city and told everybody in the city that Jesus was here. And all of these people came to see this man. She said, come see a man who told me everything that I've done. So they came, and the Bible says that they all came. They hung out with Jesus. Jesus hung out there for a while. And after, after a while of him hanging out there, we believe not because of your word. We believe because we've met him. We believe because we've had an encounter with him. We, we believe because we know him now. We believe because we've tasted and see that the Lord is good. We believe now because out of your belly flowed rivers of living water. This is a message to the thirsty. It's crazy we got thirsty people in our churches. But if you're thirsty, the church is the place to come to where you can get some of this spirit and get wet and go back out into the community. And be like the woman at the well, and out of your belly flow the rivers of living water, and people be transformed, and they don't believe because of what you said, but they believe because they've experienced the water themselves. Oh, this is good to me. So God is so awesome that when, so when he uses water, he uses water not only just to nourish you or to fill you, but he uses water to purify. John chapter 2. You know, the, you know the story, John chapter 2, where there's a wedding at Cana, and Jesus comes in, and they run out of wine, and it's like, hey, they had a wine. And Jesus is like, I, it's not my party. So then his mom says, hey, come here, you too, come here, all y'all, come here, servants. And whatever this boy, he's just a, hey, uh, son, they're out of wine. He says, it's not my time. Go tell him. Is his, is his kid getting married? Not mine. So then she says, all right, well, whatever he tells you to do, do it, and walks off. When I saw that, I was like, where are you going, Mary? Right? So she walks off. No big deal. So Jesus says, those two pots, fill them with water. That's it. Water turns, they start to draw from that, turns into wine. Awesome thing is, the water was a purification of the natural use of the pots because they washed their feet and their hands out of these pots. So the water was a purification of sorts. 
But the awesome thing is once it was filled with the water and it was drawn from, it was fresh wine. You don't get it. God wants to fill you with the water to out of you comes fresh wine. That people are overjoyed in your presence. You guys drank before. Don't play. You people are overjoyed in your presence. People are excited in your presence. People lose their inhibitions in your presence, and they want to do everything that God tells them to do because they've tasted of the wine that God has poured out of you. This is good, guys. So God wants to fill you with water, that water be pulled out of you and be made pure wine for people to partake of this wine. Not only does God use the water to purify or to create wine or this sweet nectar within you. Let me, let me stop there for a second. Some of us, some Christian people are some of the most bitter, mean, meaner than junkyard dog, nasty people. And that's avoidance of the Holy Ghost. I hate going to church services and people are just and mean. You, you say hi to them and they're just mean, cruel. You, Pastor, you know what I'm talking about. Just mean and cruel. It's because they need more of the spirit of God to dwell within them to give that sweet nectar to pour out of them. And so don't be, the, don't be those Christians. I know that's not Harvest Church, but I'm just saying don't be those people. So Jesus, so what God also does with the spirit and, and with the water is God starts over with water. He does a new thing with water. Just ask Noah. When things were wicked, he poured down water and he killed off everything that was against him. Ooh. Just ask the children of Israel when they passed over the Red Sea on dry ground what he did with water. Ask them what they did at the Jordan River when they passed over on dry ground, what God will do with water. You need some water. God is going to do, and he is, he is doing right now, new things with the water that he wants to invest and pour out of you. I want to go back to Genesis. Genesis chapter, oh, sorry, let me, let me, let me do this. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. This kind of ties this in the next Scripture ties things together. If you will pull that up for me. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. The Holy Ghost comes upon you, but he's not coming upon you just for you to say you got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost don't come upon you just for fun. The Holy Ghost comes upon you to endow you with power to do things. Jesus said, you shall have power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. There are some things that you want to do in life, need to do in life, and God has called you to do in life, but you cannot do it without the power of the Holy Ghost. He wouldn't give you power just to give you power because now that power is wasted. So he gives you power to do something. The, the, the verse says, the Spirit of the Lord, this is Jesus talking, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me and, and anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. He has given me the power, the anointing to proclaim liberty and to set the captives free and to give sight back to the blinded eyes. God has given you his spirit because there's work to do. Don't get filled with the Holy Ghost and sit on the pew. Get filled with the Holy Ghost and go to work. Somebody at your job needs the Holy Ghost. Somebody in your family needs the Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to be delivered. We can't just have one or two people laying hands on the sick and then being recovering. We can't just have one or two people up here preaching. We can't just have one or two people speaking to people and people being healed and delivered and giving them prophecy and word of knowledge. We need power. We need more people with more power. We need people who are flowing, overflowing with the Spirit in the White House. We need people who are overflowing with the Spirit on Capitol Hill. We need people in our government and in our schools, in our law enforcement, in our churches. Let me say that again, in our churches, filled with the Holy Ghost, so much so that we're transforming our communities. The Spirit is upon you for you to work, not for you to sit up and you to play games and for you to patty cake and us to, to, to manipulate people and to mess with people and to cause all this issues and confusion and to bicker back and forth. Well, my church is right. Your church ain't right. No, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, that's all I need. And then we can get this party started. Now, I'm in it right here. 
There's four things. We read in Genesis how the spirit is flowing from us. And there's four rivers. And these four rivers have purpose behind them. One of the rivers, Gihon. There is a quick bursting forth. It's a forceful breakthrough. The spirit comes to give you breakthrough. There's a quick breakthrough. Bursting forth. It's a bursting forth. That's what Gihon means. Burst forth. He wants to burst forth out of you and into someone else's life and to break them through out of whatever the bondage is that's in their life. Jesus said, once you've been converted, go convert your brothers. I don't know where that's found, but I know that's in the scripture. <laughs> it's in one of the gospels. He was talking to his disciples. He said, once you've been, you know, whatever. So anyway, though, so now the next thing, the next thing, next thing is he wants to give you passan. He wants to give you an increase. Wherever you're deficient, he wants to increase. Wherever there's not enough, he wants to give you an increase. If there's not enough money, you need the spirit because he'll give you an increase. If there's not enough spirit, you need to get connected to the spirit he'll give you the increase you don't know what to say he'll increase the word in you and you'll be able to send that out and it'll come back and it will not return void he wants to give you an increase he wants to give you oh jesus he wants to give you euphrates euphrates is fruitfulness he wants to make you fruitful so everything that you do it should bear fruit Jesus said, if you're in me, you'll bear fruit. Matter of fact, let me give you this. He didn't say this, but everybody bears fruit. It don't matter if you're in him or out of him, everybody bears fruit. But it depends on if you're in him or not, whether it's holy fruit, righteous fruit, or if it's wicked fruit. But when God makes someone fruitful, it's holy fruit. It's a righteous fruit. It's a fruit that you can eat, and it's a fruit that everyone else can eat. See, one of the problems about being fruitful is a lot of people, when we look at ourselves as trees or as part of the vine or the branch, people don't come to the tree for the shade. And the apple tree doesn't eat from its own fruit. It produces fruit for someone else to eat from it. But some of us in the, oh Jesus, some of us have become so greedy and so me, 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 that we grow fruit and we want to eat the fruit. But if you begin to grow fruit, this is tithe and offering talk right here. If you begin to be fruitful and you start to give the fruit away, God has no choice but to give you more fruit. Pay your tithe and your offering. Pastor didn't pay me to say that. I'm just, that's just what the scripture says. The last thing, the last thing that, the, that these four rivers, the last thing that he wants to do is give it to you Hedekiel. Hedekiel is rapid. Things that took a long time to maintain or to gain, he's going to do it quickly. Things that you've been praying for for years, it's about to come quickly. The things that you've been desiring, it's about to come quickly. The things that you've been praying for, it's about to come quickly. Deliverance on my child, come quickly. Healing in my body, come quickly. Finances, come quickly. Jobs, come quickly. People, come quickly. The church house filled, come quickly. The new building, come quickly. Deliverance, come quickly. Whatever we need, we need it quickly, 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 because the enemy moves like a lion. Imagine how fast the enemy moves. God has to move even faster now. So we need it quickly. I prophesy to you that the things that you've been praying for and fasting for and seeking God for, it's about to come through quickly once you're filled with the Holy Ghost. This is a message to the thirsty. We are thirsty. We need more from God. We need him to pour out more of himself on us. When there's a vein flowing in the sanctuary, when we're in praise and worship, I'm just, I'm daring you to get up on your feet and to come right up here. Sorry, Pastor, if I'm overstepping. But I'm saying if there's a flow right here, I'm just betting everybody in here from now on during praise and worship, get in the flow. I sit right here on my seat and I feel a flow. I feel, I honestly feel a current that just flows through here. But it's crazy how we people of God, we're the people of God, but we don't feel his spirit back here. We got to feel the spirit when we come in here so that way we know when it's the spirit out there. It just blows my mind how people knew, well, you know, I'm going to go do this. And you knew it was right for you then, but once you get saved, you don't know, well, is that God talking to me? Is that the Spirit? 
should I do? The stuff you did before didn't work. So let's try something new, right? Get in the flow of the spirit. And I guarantee you everything will transform you. When you get in the flow of the spirit, when the pastor's preaching, every word that's spoken will slap you in the face. It'll make you giggle. It'll make you laugh. If, if we really get in the flow of the spirit, we'll have sprint, people sprinting around the sanctuary. If we get in the flow of the spirit, we won't even have to lay hands on people, and people will be healed through praise and worship. All we got to do is stand up here and say healing in the name of Jesus, and people will be healed. The Bible says that the, the apostles walked and their shadows were healing people. They were sending handkerchiefs around, and they were healing people. They said, get up and walk, and the dude got up. We don't even got to touch nobody, and they'll get up and walk if we get in the flow of the Spirit. If you get in the flow of the Spirit, you go to work, those people who you don't like, and they don't, they, they don't like you, all that stuff will change. He said, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. But at the table, there's a whole lot of food, but there's also something to drink. You got to have something to wash it down. This ain't my Bible, but for, you know, sake of the word, it's written here. So we need the word because the Bible says that this is the bread of life. The Bible is the bread of life. We need something to wash that down with. And as we wash it down with the spirit, the nutrients from what we eat, our body absorbs it. With the water that God has given to us. I hope I tied that all together. But you need the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost wants you. The Holy Ghost is such a gentleman that he will not force himself on you. The Holy Ghost will not make you accept him. But he wants you. More than ever before. And I'm closing with this. God needs us filled. Till overflowing. The world is in a dark chaotic place. And God needs us. We, the people of God, are the answer for the ills, the sicknesses, and the diseases, the issues that are going on in our society. And at that, God bless you.